Cute. Happy Saturday, Australia. Just gotta get some followers up. We have Black Eye City Soul coming on. And my boy Trail is coming on. And Preach Sneaks coming on. And we have the birthday girl, Little Princess. I'm just getting some viewers. Hang on, I just gotta get someone in. Shout out to Ad Sneaks for doing that this morning. I was half asleep. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Hopefully, we get you back on soon again. Hang on. I can't. Yeah. I'll come on, get. What up, what up? Hey. What's happening? Well, uh, how, did, how are you, man? How was the experience today with yeah, good, Snakes? Man. Well, this this guest back I see is really, really good. Like I really want him to come on, and he's mm -hmm. he's willing to come on. So, have you get your notes ready? <laughs> Always. And I'm uh, got my Snoop, got my Snoop Dogg wine as well. <laughs> Hang on. <clears throat> Oh yeah, we've got the get the um, few people coming in today. Hang on. Awesome. What's, I'll get in... What's going on yeah. in the background, then, man? Oh, uh, they're having a drink. <laughs> As usual, Saturday, Saturday Aussie life. Yeah, true. And we're sitting on this. Hang on, I'll I'll put back back I back I city so. Hang on. There he is. Hey, what's going on? What's up, man? How are you, my brother? I'm good, man. Sound like you got a party going on in the background. <laughs> yeah, like my, my daughter, my daughter in that, and my wife. Okay, all right. Yeah, nothing wrong with they're, that. They're having That's a it. drink. It's Saturday night over here. Yeah, yeah. Our Saturday just yeah. started, so. <laughs> um, you want to introduce yourself first? All right, yeah. Uh, my name's Kev, a.k.a. Buckeye City Soul. Um, I am one-fifth of the uh, Monday Mid Soul uh, podcast on YouTube. Uh, I've been collecting sneakers since, well, I've been getting Jordan since, I'd say, 89 um, but I always, I've been a fan since the Jordan 2. Um, 
live in Columbus, Ohio. It's early here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah, it's early. Well, this is my wife and I, we get to um on Saturday and Sunday we kind of swap which person has to get up with the baby. And uh today's her day, so she's gonna take the baby to the to the park and then I'm gonna get a nap later. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> And and uh, thank you very much for coming coming and join us and being no problem, a- man. I appreciate uh, the invite. And um, yeah, you want to go first, Swoosh? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, what made you start collecting shoes? Um, I I played basketball as a kid. Um, I think I, I started at six, and I would see you know certain kids like back then. <laughs> A lot of people weren't really buying the like, super expensive shoes. There'd be like one or two kids that had those shoes, and then when you know they go to school, everybody's like, "Oh wow, check these out!" So I remember um, a kid had the Jordan Three that I played on the same team with, and I just bugged my mom and bugged my mom. And you know, when the fours finally came out, my parents were actually going through a divorce, and uh, I used that as leverage to uh to get mm. the Jordan 4 so um that's when I started and then I've always been in the shoes ever since um I kind of went through a time when I went to college and you know being a new a new dad straight out of college stopped collecting for a while because I mean hey priorities are priorities so um, yes. but got back into it um mm. I think maybe 2012 or so and then it's been uh it's been crazy ever since <laughs> <laughs> roughly how many pairs probably like five something 500 a little bit over 500 probably oh, I'm, I'm going to start selling a few because oh. um, because as you know you know when the Jordans get older certain models start to deteriorate they break. yeah mm-hmm. yeah and it's just better for me to get rid of some of those pairs that you know really don't mean too much to me I mean I've I've got pairs that are most I have one through thirteen in these clear cases, but some of them aren't in the case. So I figure, mm-hmm. why not get rid of the ones that aren't in the case? Because obviously, I'm, you know, I'm probably not going to wear them. So somebody else will get some joy out of it, and I'll get some money to invest. <laughs> mm, bless. Um, well, um, well, the question I'm going to ask is: Your top five sneakers? Top five. Uh, number one is a bread for because that's the shoe, the first shoe that I got that I asked for. Um, I, I think mm. I got the, I think I did get the Chicago one as a, as a, as a really small kid. It was five or so, mm. but I didn't really care for them then. I didn't really appreciate the ones until, you know, maybe somewhat recently, maybe like the past five or six years. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, the uh, bread four is number one. Number two was a raging bull five. Um, number three, Concord 11, number four, uh, Dornbacher 4, and 5, uh, it's going to bring it up. I'm trying to think, what is it? Because <laughs> <laughs> the 5 spot can kind of move around depending on, you know, what I like. I- I'll go with the bread 4. Or not, not bread, bread, bread one, bread one, bread one. Yeah, the uh, with the uh, the the lighter mm. red than the, the, the color, last release. Yeah. yeah, the the last release has the the darker, which the I'm darker, not a, yeah. a huge mm. fan. When it's got all the pixie dust on it, because I don't wear these ones. But uh, but yeah, the uh, the bread four is my is my favorite of all time, and I know it's probably not a popular. Um, you know, pick for best shoe, but you know it's got sentimental value to it. Of course, and that's what the snake game's all about. I feel right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, mm. it's built on nostalgia. You know, I mean, that's why the retros mm. do so much better than the the current because there's no memories of what's you know the current the current. Pair. What's the current? Yeah. Hmm. That's true. Oh. 
I like that if you play basketball, the current ones are the ones you need to to really get into. Some of the new LeBron, some of the uh, the I don't know if the the latest Jordans are great on court, but the thirty one is an excellent basketball shoe. Um, mm. But you know, I wouldn't play basketball on any of these. Nah, no, 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 no. agreed. Your turn, last kicks. What's what's your um toppest list of the collaboration with Jordan? Like top top uh, five. Top five. Um, I mean, we got to go with the the Dornbacher. Um, mm. The Dornbacher is probably. I mean, this is one of my favorite shoes, but and it's one of the shoes that like I was like, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and buy these and spend the money on them. Um, but yeah, these are mm. these are my these are my favorite of all time. Um, then I'll go with uh, Travis Fours. Yeah. Um. Uh, all white. Off white uh, ones. Yeah. That's three. That's five. I'll go off white. The white pair of the fives. I have those over there. Um. That's, that's then, hard to get now. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I mean all the off off white. It's it's hard mm -hmm. to get now with the yeah, Jordan White is, collab. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just crazy. They, I mean, I, you would think that they would at least give us one pair that you know that we could all get, and uh, outside mm -hmm. of a a women's mm -hmm. runner, because the women's runners, I mean, they you know mm -hmm. you get those for retail for the most part if you if you like them and they come in you know extended sizes. The last one is uh, Dornbacher three. Round up my five. But yeah, Dornbacher and Travis, I think, have probably the, the, the best. Dor Dornbacher, the Travis, best, yeah. and Off-White probably have, like, the best, for me, um, you know, picks. And then I also, I just got the Amonier uh, threes, and the quality on yeah. those are, is crazy. Um, I'm actually, I got them on today, so. But, yeah, the quality on these Eight. is yeah. bananas. No. I wish they would, I wish they would do that with, uh, with all of them, with the suede. See, see the release here in Australia is pretty shit when it comes to Jordan releases. We had to mm -hmm. get get those limited ones. We we don't get them. Yeah, that's tough. I know and it probably gets super pricey too. If you were, do they uh the StockX? Mm. You have StockX out there? Do they do they send to you? Yeah, yeah they, they, they yeah yeah they ship here. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. ship here. The yeah, shipping's yeah. like eighty dollars though, seventy dollars. <laughs> and then you, you then crazy. you gotta pay for the tax. <laughs> then you gotta yeah, pay you for gotta the pay. tax, and then you gotta pay mm -hmm. for the pay yeah, for, for the rest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it gets it gets super. But I wish I wish Australia had. I wish I wish Australia had the release like that, like what you guys have. You know, be good. Yeah, but we don't even have work. we don't even have the app. <laughs> yeah. Well, depending on where you live here, I mean, it's just the same as living there because, I mean, I live in Ohio, so we don't really get a lot of, you know, the releases. We don't get the early the early drops. Um, so it's like if you don't live in New York, Chicago, Atlanta, L.A., you know, some of those other cities, uh, you really don't have the same access. So you end up paying, you know, StockX or GOAT, um, Quite big, you know, yeah. or you mm. take – take matters into your own hands and try to deal with someone direct, which I wouldn't do because you never know mm. what someone, you know, someone's up to. A lot of times people will act mm. like they're selling a shoe and don't even have yeah. the shoe. And then you yes. end up losing money and then that's even worse. So. Mm, that's it. And it's very well, dangerous man, man. to actually, to actually deal with someone that you don't know. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can, I mean, if you don't know what you're killed you're, on, you're, you're up front again. Yeah. Yeah, there's been people that that've been Crazy. killed over sneakers and you know, uh, what is it, the Craigslist and things like that. I'm like, eh, I'm not doing that. Mm. Oh, if I'm gonna sell mm. shoes, it's gonna be, you know, over either eBay, Goat, or um, StockX. Mm. And I just, you know, I take the less money to have that safety, and and then also someone doesn't have your address. Yeah. So, you know, if you sell, yeah, of course. It. 
Yeah, I definitely, you know, I don't want to have to deal with that. I mean, we have security here, um, but I don't want to have to, to you know, defend my family over sneakers. So, of course. Yeah, that's it. How is the um, sneaker culture in Ohio? It's it's pretty strong. Uh, there's groups um, of people that hang out. I don't typically hang out locally mm. because just because of that factor where you don't know who's in it for what. Um, I mean, someone could be friends with someone that yep. is into robbing people and, you know, you become, you build a friendship and then all of a sudden they know how many shoes you got, especially they with, turn on how, yeah. yeah, especially with like how Instagram is. So someone can look you up and see, go through your catalog mm. of pictures and see exactly what you have. And then, you know, you go on vacation and then someone's in your house, you know, so yeah, I, crazy. I, you know, I, I stick away from the actual face to face meetups and we do have, um, you know, different sneaker shows that happen here. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a, it's great turnout. I um, mean, I like to go mm-hmm. out and, you know, I'll see people. But I just kind of like, you know, I'll just try to blend in and, and don't, you know, really get too involved with the with the local culture. But you know, we have sneaker con that happens here and it will up in Cleveland um that I try to I try to make and then, you know, that's sneaker cons are kinda of what you know, some of the guys on the show and we all try to like link up there and mm. um and we never buy sneakers there. It's just you you know, see people and talk talk sneakers, man. Uh, but yeah it's, see people it's made up yeah. Man. It's strong. I mean, and, and there's people like the, they always sell out here. Like there's never shoes, you know, left over. Um, if you go to the mall mm. on a on a release day, there's people out there waiting for the extra pairs. Um, so it's strong here. I, I don't know if it's the financial aspect of it or if people are actually in the shoes. I think there's probably a, a blend of both. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they I think that they could, they were talking about, I think, putting a Nike store here that does the releases, which I think would be great. Um, I just hope that they make it so mm. it's somewhat fair. Like the Flex app is not fair. Um, you know, you can have a, a bunch of points, but if someone else has more, maybe they sold a, a bunch to some other person, then all of a sudden you're out of the running mm. for anything. So I can't win anything on mm. a Foot Locker, you know, um, foot action or champs um like i used to win all the time and then now it's just like nope so i have to kind of pick and choose which shoes Something i want to get yeah mm-hmm. or spin resale but it's, never... there's, there's a lot there's a lot of things like there's a lot of people that's been like saying about the the app the app is no good lately you know oh yeah it's that's, it's because I, i speak to people on that side like in america mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Oh, Jay Soul and that. I speak to them, and okay. sometimes they always say, "Yeah, they always say like, yeah, the app is shit." <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. It's the. Yeah. It, I mean, it's it's crazy how unfair it is. At least with sneakers, um, you're probably gonna get an L, but here and there, you know, you'll you'll actually get a W. Um, with flex, mm. it's just pretty much like you're wasting your time, and then you also have to use your points to you know, get the extra head starts and then that doesn't work. So you're just burning points, which, I mean, at this mm. point, I don't even try anymore. Like I used to, okay, I'll give it a shot, but there's no point in trying anymore. I typically try to lock the my back shoes door, in early. The, what about the backdoor team on, on um, Cleveland? How, does it, um, is it, is it very active there? Backdoors, like where people buy them, um, early yeah. yeah yeah i'd imagine i'd imagine it, it's it's you know the same as everywhere else um you know people are mm. working in shoe stores and they're looking to make a couple extra bucks so they look out for their their friends um i'm not sure on how it works with the mm. with the flex app if they're able to do that or mm. you know i mean i could imagine that you could use someone's footlocker card on purchases that people don't have a card and then just blow their numbers up. I mean, you know, I, I, I would imagine that they'd be able to do that. But yeah, I mean, the back door is is open everywhere. Um, mm. And I mean, it's not it's not even the mom and pop places that get Jordans. 
it's not their fault because they have to buy all this yeah. other stuff that you know they they can't sell, so they got to do that to turn a profit. So it is it's a it's a problem that mm. starts with Nike, I think. Yes. Ultimately, yeah. I mean, I, like if I own a store, I would want to buy what I could sell. Make sure. <laughs> yeah, you that's know? it. I don't want to make sure you get wanna... you get back anything with it. Yeah. You know? Exactly. I don't want to buy True mm. Flights. Because they're gonna sit here for, you know, or forever, and then I'm gonna end up donating them. Like, I want to make money. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and um, hey, let's let, let's talk about your po po podcast lately. Who's the interested okay. person that you've had on lately? Uh, we had Jay Yannick. Um, he is the social media um, rep for uh, Fila. Um, he had some some great and it was uh, it was it was cool, man, having him mm. on there and kind of talking about his story. You know, going from you know you know working at Foot Locker to um, you know his position that he's in now and looking to partner with you know people like us um, to you know kind of push the the mm. culture forward. Because I mean, I think that a lot of us you know we love sneakers, but it would be awesome to, to play a role within the sneaker community where we had some say in what happens with our community. So uh, it was great to have him on. Um, yes. Mm. Who is of the Rares app. So the Rares app is kind of like a, a stock purchasing option with sneakers. So uh, they bought the, mm. the Yeezys. I think it was like 1.8 or 1.5 billion. Um, and what you can do is you can actually buy wow. shares in the shoes and, you know, you can you can make some money off the shoes basically through stock. Instead of if you didn't want to buy, mm. you know, invest in like Dogecoin or something like that, you want to invest in something that you know about, um, you know, that's an option for you. And just kind of walking through, you know, his his uh, his past. And he's actually I'm a Baltimore Ravens fan football team. Um, and he he was actually a Raven uh, mm. back in the day, so uh, it was kind of cool to have him on there. You know, have someone that was on a professional team, uh, you know, on the show. Um, but yeah, man, mm. we we've had a lot of a lot of different people. We've had Perfect Pair on. We've had Jacques Cousteau, uh, Mike Rich. Um, you know, we've had a, a lot of a lot of different people, and it's, it's really cool to get different people's perspective within the culture and. Uh, Mm. passion for mm. for sneakers um you know we welcome them on and and uh you know we do the interviews and we used to do a two hour show which i thought was a little bit better because we could kind of do some different interactive things um, but now we shifted it down to an hour so the interview pr you typically takes about a half hour and then we talk about a couple topics um but we used to play uh we used to play a game called Gap where, mm. you know, we'd all pick a shoe and, you know, we'd all just kind of vote on it and just kind of have jokes and things like that. Mm. So we may bring that back or just have just a show with just that. Um, you know, we've been kind of talking about a few different things in mm. order to, um, to you know, just kind of differentiate ourselves. Yes, I because, I mean, ideas. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm. because, like, the thing about, like, Sneaker YouTube is that there's there's people that do the same thing. And it's just like you want to always mm. keep reinventing, otherwise it becomes you know it becomes stale or you know there's times where people Same. they could take your idea and then do it better than you, um, which I don't have a problem with you know like I mm. think that you know you motivate each other to be better and if you find something else that you like that you know you can be innovative then you start it up maybe somebody else takes it to a different place but you still have stake in that in that claim you know you know you still know that you created. Mm. Um, you know, something like, I mean, we created, we, like I said, we created the gap and then uh, we had the guys from um, the full size run on the show. We had two guys. We had, we had uh Trinidad James, we had Matt Welty mm. and then they, um, they created drip for skip, which is basically the same thing that they had taken from our show. Um, so it was kind of cool just to see, you know, our mm. idea um, flourish on a, on a bigger, uh, because I mean complex, yeah. you know they're at the they're at the top. Mm. So yeah, 
Uh, my question for you what is: you, What got a, you guys it's a silly in the question, But I'm going to ask it anyways. Oh, you kicks. You go. Oh, Lace, you go first. What's that? What got you into sneakers? What well, <clears throat> What got me into sneakers is when I wasn't I wasn't an MJ fan, but when I watched the oh, Space Jam, like break like I, okay. Like when I watched the Space Jam when I was a teenager, I fell in love with the mm. shoes with MJ okay. shoes. And the very first shoes I had, I think I had the same conversation with my boy B Boy Laspin. If you guys ever okay, watched yeah, that, yeah, Lars. That, yeah, yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's awesome. And um, yeah, um, my 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 first shoe was a Jordan Seven Hairs. Like that was my okay. ever first shoes. I fell mm. in love with the Jordans ever since then. But um, what got me started doing my community is because lace kicks. As I uh, I thought of something like I I wanted to do something different because in the game in here in Australia, well, no disrespect to other people, but I wasn't really welcome when I started. I felt like I needed to to do something to make that better for the young generation of mine, which is you know coming up mm. to make them feel more better and didn't have to go through what I went through. And so what right. I went through, you know what I mean? That's but it's cool. hard because, it, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard because, you know, there's, there's, there's a different, like, I don't know, like there's different things, thoughts and feeling of other people when they start their own community. And then mm. when you try and reach out for them, they're thinking that, uh, you know, it's like a competition when you try and reach yeah. out for something. Mm. I, I think that the, the sneaker culture is built on that mentality, though, unfortunately. Mm. Like, I think that um, me having something that's exclusive, I mean, that just sa says it all, you know, because you want to be the the different, you want to have differentiators. <laughs> like, even if you have the same shoes, yeah. you want to change the yeah. laces, you want to rock it a certain way. So I think that, you know, there's a lot of people that um, they don't want you to get close because they don't want to, you know they don't want to share the spotlight uh which is mm. which is a problem um you know but i think there's enough people in here that are willing to work together to make whatever you want to do work 100% mm. thing I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself so massive nike head um i've been collecting shoes for about 9 10 years roughly okay um Love everything and everything about Nike. I think the first shoe that sort of kicked it off for me was the um, Anthony Hardaway 2s. Okay. Um, being a kid growing up playing basketball, loved the shoe and loved Anthony Hardaway. So had to have those shoes. And then ever since then, just kept snowballing and snowballing. And the job that I'm in now that I love doing is just, it's yeah, I can teach. He sneaker shop. <laughs> I, yeah, oh, I got a awesome. sneaker store. So I, I teach people... Um, yeah, so I, it's what I love doing and love teaching kids about. So that's awesome. That's me, that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a I'm a Nike guy too. I mean, Nike Jordan, um, those are the the bulk. Um, you know, I, I sprinkle in a few Yeezys or Adidas here and there, uh, but for the most part, it's I'm probably about ninety to ninety five percent Nikes and Jordans. I think. I think I, I started following you when I started following one leg Lester, I think, and yeah. Molly Moore. Yep. Yeah. My brothers. They, they haven't been they haven't been active lately. Ma Mal, Mal is still active. Um but he also runs the Kyrie Kyrie page and then the Curry page. So he's 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 doing a lot. Mm, okay. Um Daniel, one legged Lister, mm. he's he's taking a break. Um Mm. Which is which I'm I'm happy for him because he's happy now. He's got his life in a in an area where um I feel like he, he's actually feeling joy. Um I think he, he did sell mm. a bunch of his shoes, but I mean he sold them to uh make a better home for his family. So, you know his family, yeah. Sh yeah, shout out to him. Uh shout out mm. to both of them, man. Um and Marcus J. Both of them, yes. Um um, unbox at Mike or Mo, <laughs> and then uh, Nicole Rican Power Girl. She's on our show as well. <laughs> um, you know, I think that 
we all sometimes need to take a break and, you know, having people that are close with us yes. to let us know, you know, when it's time to do that, you know, it's, it, it's great. Um, you know, I like to have Daniel, you know, come back into the sneaker thing, but if it's not good for him, you know, mentally, then, you know, he needs to do what he needs to do in order to be happy. But, um, but yeah, man, he's got a, he's yeah. got a strong page. I'm sure he could bring it back if he really wanted to. Um, bring it back. I just yeah. don't, yeah, I just don't know if mm. it's something. I think that when you're, when you're in the solo area, you open yourself up to criticism from people who don't even know, you know, they don't even know your first name. And a lot of times, you know, that can, that can get to yes. you, uh, depending on where you are emotionally. So, you know, like for me, mm. I just block people. Like as soon as I see some, you know, something I don't like, I just block. And then I, I try not to worry yeah. about it. It bothers me for like maybe about five minutes. Then I keep it pushing. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Just ignore them. You know, you don't need them. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't need yeah, them I mean, there's, no, there's no point in going mm. back and forth. That, you know, you don't even have a relationship with. And even if yeah. you did, you know, it's... Hey, you know, take care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Say, like, it's a block button. It's your business. It's your business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think that when you go back and forth. Another um, question. Oh, go ahead. Mm. Go ahead. No, so, Jay, I was going to say, um, because of COVID, um, a sneaker convention's opening again over there. Yeah, they are. They are opening um, sneaker con actually in Dallas. They're having that next. Yeah, I think weekend, that's a sneaker con. Mm. Yeah, they're doing sneaker cons again. Mm. Um, things are opening back up here. I don't know if it's the best idea right away. Um, you know, most of the a lot of people are getting vaccinated. Yeah. I I got I got the vaccine. Uh, we had to get two shots. Um, I got it just because, you know, I, I'm not trying to, to to deal with it. I mean, I, and people are still getting sick after having the vaccine. Um, you also still have to be careful. Yeah, same on, here. Same here. You know, on what you're doing. I think, like, the Yankees, mm. I think eight of them actually got COVID, and they were already vaccinated. But they're saying that when you get it, when you have the vaccine, it's not as bad. So, you, get you know, that, anyway. that's Mm. Yeah, so I think mm. like everybody, every all the professional athletes, I believe, had to get it. Um, we were in Cleveland last weekend, and my wife and I went to uh, Bill Squire, mm. who's actually a sneakerhead. We, he had, he did a comedy show, and we're on the elevator, and these guys were like, "Hey, we don't have masks, can we get on?" I was like, "Yeah, I don't care." Um, he's like, "Yeah, you know, we're we're vaccinated or whatever." They actually played for the Cincinnati Reds because they were in town playing the Indians, mm. and. Um, but yeah, you can still you can still get it. You can still spread it. Um, they're opening things to full capacity. I think here in Ohio, um, the mask mandate goes down June second. So there's going to be people out there that you know they're not wow. wearing any mask or anything like that, and it's it's going to probably get scary uh, pretty quick. Um, but I, I hope that, you know, some places decide to keep the mask mandate at least for a while until we get our arms around this thing. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll be over soon. <laughs> yeah, how's it out how's it out there? It's pretty it's pretty controllable over here. Like we don't have that much cases. But as soon as there okay. is a case, the government actually puts the the limitation and everything back up. Just to make mm -hmm. sure it doesn't okay. really spread, which is good. It's good for the community, right? But but then it's bad for the business if we if it's cut down short for the hours and all that for the daily work. But it's good. It's oh, controlling. So they got they. <laughs> no, I agree with that. I hundred percent agree. Yeah. As soon as but we yeah. have one case, we pretty much lock it all up. Hmm. The government yeah, we, doesn't want we, doesn't want it to go. Yeah, our our government is. I think they're filling the, the, the financial strain, so they're opening it up, and I guess we're just going to see what happens. Um, mm -hmm. we, we're having an issue with um, unemployment because the unemployment was paying basically what some of these mm -hmm. people were paying to actually work. So um, it, it's mm -hmm. tough to get people to work certain jobs now because – you know, they, but they're they're shutting that down. That extra assistance, they're shutting that down 
at least here in Ohio in June. So they're, you know, people are probably going to get, you know, start getting back into work. Then the mask mandate's not there. So I, I'm hoping that another bubble doesn't happen. There's a lot of people that are skeptic about the, the vaccine. Um, you know, I mean, even if you look at, at Instagram, you'll see people that are, you know, just so anti-vaccine that it's just co- kind of like politics at this point, uh, which, you know, that's it's their right. Mm. It's their body. If they don't want to get the, the vaccine, then, you know, do it. Yeah. yeah, I guess, you know, it is what it is. But. No, like, who knows? Maybe I made the wrong decision by getting maybe I'll grow a third ear at some point in my life. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I just hope that we can kind of get back to normal <laughs> at some point. We... Yeah, so that we can get out of the country and then move, you know, see different places. And... Mm. Exactly, exactly. And I don't, go I don't back know to America and buy more sneakers. Yeah, come on out, man. <laughs> There's enough here. Just make sure you get some real ones yeah, because true. they got but, the fake, but they fake guys out here all over they... <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> they're everywhere over there. I heard. Oh yeah, they are everywhere. I is mean, it that bad? It's that bad? Oh yeah, mm. oh yeah. Because they're making them that to make them look, you know, undetectable. To you know, if you don't mm. look at sneakers all the time, you know, then you never know. And then with Nike's quality control, it's hard to tell, man. Yeah, it's that's honestly, true. it's hard. They it's actually, hard to tell. Mm. But it's just not in America, though. It's it's everywhere. Oh yeah, like, it's, it's all in, over. It's it's as well. Mm. Yeah, mm. it's all over the world. You know, it's all over the place. As soon as they know what the shoe looks like, they will make it before it's even released. Right, right. Yeah, I think what they do is they make them in different tiers so they can sell them to, um, they can sell multiple pairs to people. So what they do is they'll mm-hmm. get a you know a early, a early release. And make it kind of look like the shoe where it's you know it's definitely if you have the shoe next to it you can tell then the shoe comes out then they make a little bit better one but still has mm. some type of flaws and then maybe like a month or so after that they make one that's like a perfect one where mm. you know it's almost undetectable you know there's some differences mm. For a guy that looks at shoes all the time, like I sometimes I find it hard to see fakes. Well, now, well, now they are pretty close though. The fakes and the the real one. You, they, if you don't really know what, how to like how to look the real pair. Hundred mm, percent. You can get it mixed just, up. Yeah. Is that mine? You've or? just started. All right, I think we're. That's you. Yeah. There we go. There we go. But if you've just started collecting sneakers and you just pick up that first drawer and you wouldn't even know. Hmm. And we lost him again. We lost him. Yeah. Let me get him let me get him out. And then keep him back along. Get him back in? Oh. Yeah. Don't ask me about technology. I hate I hate this Instagram man. It's not <laughs> Sometimes it's it's playing up on me. Like one person I can see one person move, you know one person. There we doesn't. go. All right, there, there we go. go. Sorry about there that. There we go. What's going on? Oh, that's a probably right. our connection. Yeah, and, I think um, I have I think I have my Wi-Fi set to the one upstairs, and then you want to switch it. Okay. Mm. Um, another um, question I'd like to ask: the old school question. What would you rather, campouts or apps? Apps, or apps. apps. <laughs> because the campouts are dangerous, man. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. people in there that don't have two nickels in their pockets, just sitting yes. there waiting, <laughs> waiting for you to get your shoes to mm. either rob you there or follow you home and take what take all of your collections so yeah man definitely <clears throat> yeah i mean i'm not a i've never been a huge fan of, of camp outs i figure that your time is worth money so mm. if you're spending a whole day out there you know what, what's a day of pay worth to you 
Of course. Um, yeah, that's it. That's right. So, so uh, yeah, I, I definitely, um, yeah, I don't like wait. But, I don't like waiting in lines. <laughs> yeah, but, but you said the di- the difference here, um, uh, Swoosh, is that our, our place, like Australia, we, that we have the restriction for guns, so it's more safety here for kind right, of the, those saying. things. Mm, for I'm the camps saying, yeah. and all that. Cause we, Here's the wild. Because over here, you, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Everybody's got a gun here, and they're making it so you can have them out, you know, people that walk around with guns in, the, in in a holster just out open carry um that's actually you can have that but you can't have a gun like tucked into your into your you know jeans like or whatever hidden, hidden yeah, yeah you can't have it hidden unless you have a, a permit which permits are easy to get um mm. so that's scary this is md yeah. robinson what's going on <laughs> she said it's too early <laughs> it's too early <laughs> i yeah, I, I I even heard that once you open up a bank bank account there, they offer you a, a gun or something in some <laughs> state. <laughs> a, to, a, a toaster. Yeah, it, it's possible. Some of the you know some of the places they may, because uh, they I mean they do different promotions with banks, so it, it's possible mm. that that they that they would do that. But you're probably going to get something like you probably only get get like a twenty two or they're not going to yeah. give you mm. anything you know anything too crazy. But yeah, here. It's dangerous, and it's not just because the the legal. It's not the legal guns that are typically the problem. It's the illegal guns. Yeah, um, and you know you can't. You're not going to be able to regulate that because they're illegal in the first place. Yeah. And so um, I just stay away. I mean, when the Legend Blues came out, um, I was living in Dayton with my. Well, she was my girlfriend then. She's my wife now, and uh, they they dropped. And some guy, you know, he was waiting at the mall, mm. and the guy came out with his shoes. The guy, he was trying to rob him, but he didn't know that the guy that had the shoes had a gun. So he ended wow. up getting killed at the mall. And it's just like, you know, it's just, it, wow. it's, well, it's not, shoes. yeah, it's not, it's not worth it, man. I mean, I'll, I'll pay yeah. a little bit extra. I mean, if I have to go resell them, I mean, a lot of times the resell thing is what keeps me away from buying every shoe that drops. You know, like, hey, I don't want to spend anything extra on this shoe. Uh, if I don't get it, then I just don't get it. I move on to the next one where, mm-hmm. you know, Nike could probably make you know, some more it, money pumping some more shoes. It also that. depends on you how, how bad you want the pair of that. Uh, exactly. The pair of that sneaker. Yeah. Exactly. Because that's part of, that's part of the, um, the game that we have in our lifestyle. Anyway, as a collector, you know, there's one pair that you're always going to be wanting. And that's part of, that's part of our thing. Right. You want it, you got to chase it, you know. Then once you get it, you got to move on to the next target. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like there's shoes that you really want so bad, you know, for the moment because they create that appetite. And mm. then you go ahead and you and you get them, and then you don't wear them for, you know, you might put them on for a picture when you first get them, and you don't mm-hmm. wear them for months and months. I mean, there's shoes that I was like, oh, man, you know, I was so excited to get. And then, like, I've got sneaker piles where, <laughs> you know, like I might have taken a picture and didn't even put them away. And then like, they're just piles. And I'm like, Oh man, you know, this one's at the bottom. It looks crazy now. So, um, yeah, man, it's a, it's a, it's a treadmill. This is a treadmill. Mm. I mean, you, you, you run as hard as you can and you get nowhere. <laughs> mm. <laughs> just always K bond. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of, what's the next um, sneaker that you're looking forward to? Um, or, or well, anything did, that you're. Oh, you go ahead well, first. Go ahead. I did. I did cop the. Um, I did the pre-order on the Shadow 2.0. So, hey, I'll have those um, next week sometime. Um, outside of that, there's. It's looking pretty light. Um, I think the next shoe I want is was like a. What is the the blue? There's a blue three that's coming out. I think in like July. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be something else that comes out. Oh, actually, LeBron eight South Beach. I'll probably yes. buy. Mm. Mm. I'll probably get a pair of those at some point. I know that they're starting to kind of trickle out here. Uh, I've seen some people, you know, get them, but um, yeah, the LeBron eight South Beach is probably going to be the the next shoe I get outside of that that two point 
it's been no, you're not looking forward. To, you're not looking forward to the uh, Kobe's coming out. I don't look forward to the Kobe's coming out because I never, I never have access to Kobe's. Mm. Um, you know where I get my shoes from doesn't get Kobe's. Well, the place that I get most of my shoes from doesn't get Kobe's, mm-hmm. um, and it's just like, like I'm a I'm a Kobe fan for the legacy. I was a Jordan fan, so you know it's kind of like similar to Jordan fans to that don't like LeBron. Like mm-hmm. I wasn't, mm. you know, I, I thought that Kobe I threatened, threatened Jordan's legacy. So, mm. you know, I wasn't I wasn't able to really enjoy Kobe uh, like everybody else um, mm. until, you know, his last year, you know, and then I really was like, oh, you know, wow, you know, I was rooting for him. And, you know, that last game was just awesome. 60 um, points. Yeah, that, that game was crazy. And um, mm. and then, I you know, I just kind of seen like the kind of guy he was, like the kind of dad he was. And mm. um, I mean, I have I have daughters. I have one son, but I have daughters. So, you know, that, that bond that you have. And, you know, it was just super sad that, you know, how he went out. Yeah, it is. Um, it's very shocking. So, you know, I, I'll try, I try, you know, I'll get into raffles and things like that. But for the most part, I know that, you know, those pairs are probably spoken for. Um, mm. Or, you know, I just, I just never get lucky on the Kobe's. Um, those red Kobe's are are fire. Um, and so are the gold ones, man. The gold ones are, are really Yeah, the nice. gold ones are good. Um, but, you know, the I wasn't. I wasn't yeah, I wasn't able to get those. And Maul is a huge Kobe fan, um, Molly Maul. Um, and it, it's tough for him to get them, too. So, you know, like, I, I don't get mm. excited for him just because I know that I, I probably won't be able to get them unless I want to spend, you know, extra the, bucks. Yeah, the extra money <laughs> to, to do that. And I think that, mm-hmm. like, I've kind of mm-hmm. limited myself into just Jordans and LeBrons uh, for, the, for the resale. Um, and, you know, mm. hopefully someone someone buys a Kobe that's a, like a huge, huge, huge Kobe fan. Um, you know, like I'm just a fan of the legacy. Yeah, hundred mm. percent. I agree. You gotta love him though when you love basketball. Oh yeah, basketball. for sure. He's, he's <laughs> yeah, he's one of the greatest, man. He's one of he's definitely mm. one of the greatest, I and mean, he's modeled after you know my favorite player. Um, mm. You know. But you know, I I got I got love for LeBron too. So I mean, he he brought a championship to you know to where I'm from. Back home, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah he did. So you know, he's always going to have a a special place for me. You know, I know a lot of people. You know, they get into the you know the goat thing, but I think the I don't really think you can say that there's actually a goat because the different eras are different styles of basketball. There's different competition. Okay. Um, yes. I would argue anybody different say, eras. There's, yeah, there's more talent on the court today mm. than there was back then, and that's not mm. Jordan's fault. That's just the evolution of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. You know, they wouldn't they wouldn't even have a league if the if things didn't get better. Um, mm. So, you know, it, it's I, I can't. I, I'm not going to say LeBron's a go. I'm not going to say you know Michael Jordan's a go. I just think that they're the greatest of their era. And yeah, Kobe's you know, one of the greats of his era. So, yeah, mm, I agree. You know, I mean, if you put Jordan back in the day with, you know, Pistol Pete and all them, Jordan would, mm. you know, he would do things that it would be bananas. But, you know, it's just the, it's the evolution. You know, you can't. No, it's a good answer. Different, different champions, champions in different eras, you know. They have. Right. Mm. Different dynasties. I mean, you different have, dynasty, you know, Celtics, different yeah, teams. You know, the Celtics and the Lakers mm. winning all those championships. But you know, mm. now with the way people are are able to move around, it makes mm. it a little bit more balanced. You know, people say that you know the big threes and the super teams are creating you know a problem, but they've always had super teams. I mean, look at the dynasties. Look at the great basketball teams. I mean, Chicago. They Bulls always had it around. Yeah, yeah. The Chicago Bulls weren't mm. anything until they got Jordan and they got Pippen. And you know, mm-hmm. and then they had a they had a, a pretty decent cast around those two guys. Um, then they won a bunch and, of championships. So yeah, mm. that's right. They got Ron Harper, and then they got Dennis Rodman, and yeah, right. I mean, Ron Harper was a starter for the Cavs. I mean, he was. Yes, he was. He was. I mean, he was. I couldn't believe when they got rid of him. And I mean, I wasn't mm. a I wasn't a Cavs fan growing up, but I went to the Cavs games. I was a I was a Michael Jordan fan. 
Uh, so when he came into town, you know, I didn't have my bull stuff on and, hmm. um, you know, but, you know, people got excited in Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland's actually a decent uh, sports city um, that, you know, they get behind their teams and, you know, even if they're trash, you know, they still, they still come out. You know, the, the Browns hmm. are, the Browns are going to be good this year. Um, they, they have, a, they do have an opportunity, you know, to get a Super Bowl, but, for years they've been so terrible and people mm. still, you know, they still come out. So. Hmm. That's a question. Yeah. KJ was saying, um, what I'm like, the three point line is more of a, of a thing now than back in the nineties when, right. They were all dunking and just shooting two pointers from mid range. Right. But I mean, you also look at, I mean, the, the shots that people are putting up now, I mean, they're mm. well well behind the three point line and, and hitting with proximity. Yeah. Or back in the day, you know, Damon you Lillard. Shoot, yeah, you shoot from back <laughs> there, you know, he probably hit, you know, twenty five percent. Now these guys are like forty three percent, you know, fifty percent. Um, half court even. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm. I mean, these guys are I mean, they're practicing these shots. That's the thing. Mm. I think mm. that you know, the the way that you practice dictates how the game actually is. So Mm. Um, you know, I don't think that they were they were looking to do that back then. Mm. So I did that when I was a kid. My coach would have put me on the bench. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, yeah, even, even Dwight Howard, even Dwight Howard now is doing three points. So. <laughs> going on, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, like I remember when I played, I played basketball in high school, and only certain people were even allowed to yeah. try to dunk. So mm. like it was like it was like me and a couple other guys, and then I remember this one kid. He had a breakaway, and he went up and tried to dunk, and he lost the ball, and he got benched for like three games. It was crazy, mm. um, <laughs> and it, we were all laughing because we we're like, "Oh, I can't believe he even tried it." But you know, <laughs> you know, that's what it is. Mm. Like, I'm too short for that. I'm too short for that. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not short. even. You know. I'm. I'm nowhere near even five seven. You know? <laughs> yeah, I used to. I'm only be, like five three. Able, I used to be able to dunk about fifty pounds ago. Uh, yeah, and, and probably about ten years. <laughs> yeah, I used to be able to, but uh, now uh, I I could probably touch the rim still, but I can't. I can't get up there like I used to. I can touch the net. <laughs> be a flyer, yeah, a yeah. high flyer, <laughs> doing all that tricks, you know. <laughs> yeah, I used to I used to be able to just man, age catches up to you, you know. You when you're a parent, yes, sir. It, it will slow past you down. The prime. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely well well past that. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Johnny Kicks. I, I was hoping Johnny Kicks would come come on this weekend. Um and um. Who, who are Yankee Kicks, Yankee Kicks as well. Yeah, I was gonna Johnny get him man, on this week. He's got some week. good stuff, man. His, his creativity is bananas. Mm. Um, like if you look at some of the same stuff as you, doing it, same some as the, you, yes. your pictures, your pictures are adorable, man. They are, I do like your work. They're good. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, he, he's keep he, keep up man, the good work. <laughs> definitely. Mm. Mm. I'm all out of questions. All right. Well, um, I think that's it for now. But Bakai, uh, okay. Bakai City, and um, what do you call this? Hopefully, hopefully we we'll get you back on in the future. Yeah, let me know, man. Thank you so yeah, much. Then, Appreciate the, it, man. Yeah, and no um, problem, thank man. you for the support. Thank you for the support. Always, always, man. Keep doing your thing, and, man. I think it's it's awesome that uh, you know, you're shouting everybody out. I mean, I actually I was do I had a shout out page. I mean, I still have it, but I just kind of lost the passion once they change the algorithm it's just like you know mm. i'm posting people but like you know people can't see it and then trying to balance all of that and work mm. and then had a baby and it was like all right look i gotta cut back or my wife's gonna kill me so <laughs> <laughs> yeah man because like I, actually this, i find out a lot of new people through your page so like mm. i'll see someone's like oh man that's dope so i'll go ahead and i'll just follow them off the strength of that you posted them um, because mm. I just think that, you know, I think it's cool to see different people's styles. Um, yes. You know, and then see how people interpret, you know, different shoes, see how, you know, people match up different things. And it's just cool mm. to kind of see people from all over the world 
get into something yes. and, like you know we might all not speak the same language but you know we all speak sneaker so yes yeah I definitely, we all have well the said. same passion we yeah, all have the I, same I, so I definitely I, I look at i look at your page and i see you drop some people i'm like all right yeah that's cool let me go ahead and follow them <laughs> thank thank you very much for this and thank you yep, very no much problem, man. for the for having you on and hopefully we'll get you back on in the future 100%. I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know. All yeah, right, guys. We'll, we'll get you back on. All right, man. Send my love to All the right. family, and you guys always stay safe, man. Eh? All right, man. Take care. Enjoy your Saturday night. Cool, man. <laughs> Thank take you. Care. Later. 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 Swoosh. I think I'm going to be back at uh, 11 o'clock. And um, I'm going to have my guy trail, so... Trail and then preach sneaks, and then we've got the birthday girl, uh, little princess. So, see you guys soon. I'll be back on again. <laughs>